In Portland, Oregon, this is a picture of me when I was Judy Orem shows us a photo of her younger self facing a death sentence. I'd picked out where I wanted my ashes to be spread. That was up on Mount Hood. Judy was told that her chronic myeloid leukemia, or CML, would take its time killing her, three to five years. Meantime, a young workaholic scientist had just moved to Portland, Brian Drucker, from the Harvard-affiliated Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, where he had pursued the radical dream of drugs able to target a single cancer gene. His reward? When I went to the head of Dana-Farber and said, I'm ready to have my own laboratory, he looked through my resume and said, I don't think so. But Brian did think so, and he got his lab by moving to Oregon Health and Science University. He began testing potential leukemia compounds obtained from a colleague at the drug company now known as Novartis. And? Within six weeks, we had data that showed that I had a compound that could kill leukemia cells without harming normal cells. In other words, a therapy targeted to a single cell. If true, it would revolutionize cancer treatment. But when Brian proposed testing the drug, now called Gleevec, in CML patients, an obstacle arose. The drug company. Charles Sawyers remembers. He was Brian's research partner and is now at New York's Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And we were getting a no for reasons that weren't scientific. Uh, so very politely but stubbornly, um, Brian uh, organized uh, a group of us to lobby Novartis to move ahead. They continued testing and lobbying Novartis for four years. In frustration, Brian finally went around Novartis to the FDA, which supported his Gleevec data. So I fed that back to Novartis and it was, we ask you not to do that, why did you do that? And they were actually pretty upset with me for doing that. But in 1998, Brian and Novartis finally tested Gleevec on patients, including Judy Orem. She discovered that Brian, the scientist, was also an extraordinary caregiver. I think, in a way, I had such faith in Dr. Drucker that it was going to be okay, that I think once I got on the drug, his drug, just something about him that I just thought it was going to work. Did it ever. Of those 31 CML patients who first took Gleevec, 30 saw their white blood cells drop to normal within a month. That was the time when we knew this drug was a big breakthrough. They were shedding tears in clinic and so was I with them. Uh, to think that we had done something, taken something out of the lab, brought it in the clinic and was helping people. That's what I went to medical school for. So now, when Novartis balked at the next round of patient trials, Brian did not fight alone. We had two people, one wrote a letter, one got the petition ready, and we sent the petition out, and I think we had 8,000 signatures out over the internet in a weekend. It worked. Today, for Judy and thousands of others, Gleevec has turned CML from a fatal cancer to a manageable condition, and it's now used for other cancers as well. Brian Drucker still directs his own lab, and the entire Knight Cancer Institute at Oregon Health and Science. By insisting on understanding targeted therapy, he helped give researchers worldwide a powerful new weapon against cancer. By bonding with patients, he helped ignite the patient advocacy movement. He opened the doors in, in more ways than one, for science and for people. Brian Drucker's parents had hoped that one of their kids would be a doctor, but the older ones all declined. So? One of those rare cases where drawing the short straw is okay. <laughs> drawing the short straw worked out quite well for me. It worked out well indeed for all of us. <laughs>